So at Admiral Slam Kogan's where you post a question if you want on Twitter. So you guys obviously got first mover advantage and you've, you've really, I suppose, sort of innovated the space of online electrical and now you've got sort of JVs, big ways, all these guys trying to push more aggressively online. How are you going to look to combat that? Like big being ways letting people actually negotiate online. Well, the whole selling online, that's just one supply chain element of our business model. It goes a lot wider than that. Our business model is all about how we engage customers, how we predict what products will be in demand, how we manufacture them how we bring them here, how, and then it kicks into the how you sell them and how you deliver them. So, um, yeah, they're catching up to us in one way <coughs> of our business by doing it online, uh, which I'd still say we're doing a lot better than they are. Uh, but everything else associated with the business, um, you know, we've got our blinkers on, they can do what they want, we know what they're doing. You seeing them copy any of your products that you bring out in terms yeah. of specs? Uh, are there other people copying our product? Are you seeing sort of JBs and the other guys out there actually copying your products, like the, the netbook example that you use? Um, yeah, I don't know. We haven't really been monitoring that. Like, there's there's other companies that release products after we do, but whether they're copying or not, you know, I wouldn't know. The day I'm waiting for is um, when I get to China and someone tries to sell me a knockoff Kogan. <laughs> that's that's where you know you've made an impact. <laughs> Uh, your brands, are they all over the Kogan brand or do you carry other national brands? That's always coming from over here. Uh, yeah. All your brands, are they under the Kogan brand or do you carry other national Kogan, brands? Kogan is our brand. Every single product we create and deliver to customers is Kogan. Second type of question, uh, yeah. how do you manage your supply chain? I'm assuming all your product comes from China. Uh, a lot. Our products are designed in Australia and assembled in China using parts from around the world. And your supply chain, you manage that as well, or is that outsourced? Um, like what, shipping the product here? Shipping in the space. Yeah, it's all managed internally. That's core, a core part of our business. Do, do you think there's a future, just here. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think there's a future for online businesses where they don't have bricks and mortar alternatives to go and try products like specifically for white goods as a point of comparison like in terms of a showroom model so you walk into the showroom you look at the product then you go online and buy um i don't think that's a very efficient way to do things you know people say well i want to see this tv you know before before i buy it like break it down to the actual facts of what's going on. You're walking into a JB Hi-Fi, you see a TV, you, you're standing in front of it. Firstly, there's different brands giving different kickbacks, so the brightness and contrast ratios are all adjusted. You hold the remote control in your hands for two minutes, and then you're gonna make a purchase decision. I think a much more educated purchase decision will be if you go onto Google, type in that model number, read independent reviews from a lot of magazines and see what people think that have used the product for one week, two weeks, one month, two months, an extended period of time. Unless you're an absolute review freak, you can't review a product in an hour or two. You know, Even if you are, you just can't review a product in an hour or two. So yeah, give people a showroom, but unless you're gonna live in that showroom, you're not giving an accurate review of the product anyway. So I think the correct business model is make your product available to the media, to journalists, to independent reviewers, build a community, let people review your products online and constantly post feedback, and then let people make decisions based on that and give them the peace of mind of a money back guarantee. You know, you've got to back your products and say, look, we're so confident in what we're doing. If you don't like it, you get your money back. So. Yeah, it, it sounds nice. Oh yeah, we've got showrooms all over the place, but bottom line is, is that showroom adding real value? No. How did you get initial traction with consumers? Um, a few ways. So, um, you know, a website, Google AdWords, participating in forums, um, you know, which had a few mixed reactions, so, you know, there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there, so if you go in there and you say, hey, look, I'm doing this, this, and this, a few people try and shut it down, but any publicity is good publicity. So you start chattering the online community, 
and um, you call today, tonight, and you tell them what you're doing. Um, you know, that works pretty well. So, so, so yeah, there's, yeah, th there are a few elements, but it's being engulfed in the, um, in the online community. Um, there's a, I want to give preference to a Twitter question. Um, so the spike from the draw and transfer, and could we quantify it? Um, look, it probably didn't have a direct impact on sales, although it, it had some impact on sales. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw out numbers. The main thing that we saw out of it was the support we got from the community, the number of emails we kept getting from people saying, well done, stick it to Harvey and all of this sort of stuff, which isn't, which wasn't our intention with it all. Our, our intention with what was going on was, I actually thought it's a really serious issue. We've got a $50 billion consumer electronics industry. There's a business model out there that can save you 20 or 30%. The election's going on. They're talking so much about this $4 billion NBN. If you look at saving 30% to consumers in the consumer electronics industry, we're talking about $15 billion. So I thought it's a really serious issue. So I said, hey, Jerry, let's have a friendly chat discussion. Let's, you know, let's talk about the future. He obviously had to decline because he's got other interests. He can't talk like a true entrepreneur who has certain thoughts and values and beliefs in them. He's got to protect the millions of dollars he's received from franchise owners and has to keep convincing them that they're onto a winner. Um, so, you know, there, there's a few there, there's a few conflicts of interest there, but yeah, it didn't work out, but it was definitely very nice being on Australia's, you know, highest watched TV show and having our brand analysed. I, I enjoyed sitting on the couch watching it. Can I ask a question? Following on the one about how do you get traction with consumers, how do you get traction with the people that actually assemble the stuff in China? I mean, that must have been really interesting with yeah. no background in the, the industry. It, it certainly is. Um, the thing with China is they're all about production line and mass production. So, um, when I started contacting factories and making shortlists and deciding which ones I want to work with, um, you know, I shortlisted a few and, you know, did all the due diligence. And then when I told them, you know, how I want to place an order for one container, uh, they told me they're not interested in working with me. They said, look, you know, we've got customers in the UK and USA placing orders 50 times as big. Um, it's just not efficient for them to set up their production line to make one container of products. Now my view on business is it's all about incentives and it's all about a win-win situation. So if someone's come to me with a deal but I don't see what the incentive for them is or what the win is, I always decline it because I'm not interested in something like that. If it you know it means there's there's something else going on there. Now so I I was really, you know, baffled at this stage. I've already give, given in my resignation at Accenture and China's just told me they don't want to take my order. Uh, one night I got an idea where I approached the factory that I, I had listed as the you know, best one I wanted to work with and everything that comes out of China is Chinglish. So their presentation brochures look crap, they'll have pictures all over the place, nothing's aligned, they'll use five different fonts, their Excel pricing spreadsheets are all over the place, like um, it's, yeah, you know, they don't do tables, they do matrix matrices. So it's nothing was organized, nothing <coughs> made sense, and you had to literally sit there and spend a while making sense of it. And to them it's all okay because, you know, it's all emerging in China, but to Western business people, they would not accept that sort of presentation and things like that, but they had to because there's nowhere else to get the stuff manufactured. I stayed up one night, redid all of this stuff for that factory, redid all their documentation, brochures, uh, things like that, uh, all their pricing stuff, emailed them the next day and I said, hey look, um, you know, I appreciate that you think my business might work, but you don't want to work with me because I'm, you know, my order's insignificant. The profit you're going to make off working with me and the value add for you isn't my one small order. I can help you out in other ways. And I sent them all this marketing documentation. They replied the next day and they said, hey, look, uh, we accept your order. They gave me an even better price than I wanted and they said, look, we, we really want to work with you. And they let me know two weeks later, they said, hey, because of what you did for us, we've just locked in a massive customer 
in Europe. So um, it wasn't easy to, to get in the door, but by showing an exchange of value and you know finding why someone will want to want, will want to work with you and make it mutually beneficial, we pulled it off. One last question. No, in that case, Ruslan, thank you very much. Thank you.